Hey, Jody here. This week's video is a Thor Dead Blow Shop Hammer build. Let's do it. Got a lot of welding to do here, so to save time, I've just got all the pre-cut parts laid out here. Two inch by four inch, quarter inch thick bar stock, flat bar, and half inch uh, Schedule 40 pipe, black iron pipe. Nothing special. First thing I'm going to do is make this weld on both sides. I'm going to be using the CK Worldwide TIG welder maxed out at 200 amps just using a foot pedal. We'll be doing some pulse settings on both the ER70 wire as well as silicon bronze. So once I get this thing squared up and tacked in place and chucked up in the positioner, we're ready to go. A positioner, like if you're, if you're trying to take in side work, once you get your welder and hand tools, the positioner is like the next thing to get. If you get, if you get a job where you have 50 round parts or something like that, positioner man it pays for itself pretty quick all right I'm using a piece of aluminum angle for a sort of a backing block to tack up the hammer head here and that works really good for outside corner joints if you have backing on the back side I'm actually gapping this just a little bit because I want a nice wide bevel I'm gonna fill it in first the first pass with uh, just steel rod ER 70 rod but then I'm gonna fill that whole angle that whole fill it in with silicon bronze and then I'm going to, my intention is to polish it off so I have a contrast in the hammerhead and the silicon bronze fillet. You'll see as we go, these little spring pony type clamps are very handy as well. So once I get the, the hammer head all tacked up and ready to go, I'll be ready to weld the outside corner first pass. So I'm going to put the first pass in just with the 332, that's 2.4 millimeter ER70 S2 rod. And then I'll come back and fill that whole rest of that fillet in with silicon bronze. Right now I'm probably at around 130 amps, I'm guessing. Not using pulse or anything, just straight DC current. It was at this point that I had a oh crap moment. I meant to tack weld a slug in there to seal that handle off because I'm going to fill the hammer head with BBs, but I forgot. I meant to just use one of these slugs you know, fill that hole in and then tack weld the slug in. But instead, I'm going to stick the electrode way out and fill it up with weld. Now, I can't get the camera down in there, but this is going to be a good test for the stick out on that cup. I'm wearing a passive helmet here that my friend Alex Brown sent me um, because you'll get flashed a lot of times welding down in a hole like that with an auto darkening. So it didn't have any trouble there getting good shielding, filling that thing in. In case you didn't catch it earlier, here's a little close-up of the stick out on that thing. It's just a little more than an inch and a quarter. Uh, worked fine. All right, got a lot of welding to do here, and we're going to mess around with some pulse here after we get the thing wire brushed off. I, I like using a drill motor or a cordless grinder with a wire wheel so it doesn't sling bristles. So I'm just going to set the pulser on here, and about one pulse a second. It's kind of hard to achieve with dials like this. You have to kind of play around with it, but one pulse per second. And I'm just doing it, leaving the wire in the puddle just about like this. And that worked out pretty good. From here on out, I think I'm going to be using this number 8 cup. It uh, doesn't use quite as much gas. 15 to 20 CFH is all you need here. And on this silicon bronze, what you need is good gas shielding and you need a good shiny surface to weld on for best results. And the reason I'm, I'm messing around with pulse here is because I'm welding this thing in the horizontal position. So it'll kind of want to sag on me without pulse unless I'm real careful. The bottom of that bead is sagging just a tad right now if you can, if you really look closely. But the pulsing here just lets it solidify momentarily and I'm just leaving the rod in the puddle. I'm using a 1 8 rod and I'm going to blend it off anyway afterwards so it's working out good. Now I've got a lot of facing to do here and I'm going to show you on a scrap piece some techniques here. You can just dip in and out just like you would any other type welding. This is actually technically TIG brazing with silicon bronze when you're welding, when you're doing it on steel. You don't have to dip the rod in and out. You can just get the heat right and walk it a little bit back and forth like that and that works just fine. Uh, pulsing I have had a lot of good luck with lately and just leaving the rod in the puddle that's called lay wire and just pulsing at about one to one and a half pulses a second and that's mostly what I'm going to do here. Now I'm going to speed this up quite a bit, otherwise we'd be here all day. But I'll show you a little bit of real time here. This is the speed, just about one pulse a second here. I like one and a half pulses too, but once I got it dialed into one, I thought that's close enough. And what you want to do here if you're doing an overlay like this, you want to have your wire wheel handy. 
you're going to be wire wheeling a lot every time you make like one round around it or every two or three little runs. You also need to stop and let things cool every time you make, you know, two or three little runs. Now, it's going to appear like I never stop in this video, but I stop several times to cool this thing off. Otherwise, it just gets out of, it gets out of hand. You get a lot of oxide and doesn't flow good. Here's a technique that I like to use with silicon bronze, just almost like brazing with a torch. You know, forward and back, I'm just kind of walk, washing that filler metal in there, not using pulse in this particular shot. All right, everything is real fast from here on out. We'll wrap it up. This is all going to be blended off and polished at the end anyway, but that's close enough. A nice surface, a nice hammerhead faced with silicon bronze on both ends. And now I've got a whole lot of blending and polishing to do. Well, thanks to Walter Surface Technologies for sending me this polishing kit. Sure has come in handy on this. I'm stepping it down about three different steps to a final polish with a, sort of a jeweler's rouge type, type of a bar. And I'm going to polish it, a final polish. It's close enough right now. I'm going to weld this little bung in here first. And on a positioner, a little trick on a positioner, I take a piece of tape and I mark off eighth inch increments. And then I try to get it where they count off an eighth of an inch per second. And that usually gets me right in the ballpark. It's hard to eyeball it and get it accurate, but doing that eighth inch per second thing with a piece of tape works like a charm. Gets you right in the ballpark. It's not always exact. Like some things it's a little faster, some, some things go a little slower but it's a good place to start. So I'm using a 2.4 millimeter, that's a 332 silicon bronze rod for this thing, just leaving it in the puddle. So this, this hammerhead starting to take shape, starting to look like I kind of want it to. So what I'm going to do next is a little heat tint. I'm just gonna, that's going to give me a nice contrast to sort of a blue purple tint on the steel. And then I'll come back and repolish the silicon bronze corners and it should, uh, should give a nice contrast. While it's good and hot, I thought I would shoot it down with WD-40, let that soak into the pores of that steel a little bit, and give it just a little bit of a shot of not rusting. I'll keep you posted if it does rust. A lot of varying opinions on WD-40 for that. But I'm going to polish up the brass pieces now again so that I get that contrast. Wrap the handle with paracord here. Now that end cap, that's just a pipe cap there. I put it on, the, chucked it up on the positioner and used a flap disc to make it look shiny and you know like it was something more than what it was but now it's time to fill it up with shot or BBs I should say I may come back and add a little sand I may add lead shot I don't know I think the BBs will work but don't know gonna have to try it out fill it up about maybe a little bit more than three quarters full so they have you know room to shift around and, and the hope is that it does make it into a dead blow where the hammer doesn't rebound or doesn't rebound much when you hit something with it with a hollow handle with an end cap like that, I've got a place to keep a center punch. So at least I'll be able to find a center punch now if I can remember to put it back every time. Feels good with that paracord handle on there. It's about seven or eight pounds total. Now I have a completed Thor dead blow hammer with silicon bronze faced ends that looks like no dead blow hammer I have ever seen before. <laughs> I'll be using this thing for years to come in the shop here, but when my two grandsons see this video, I think I might be building a couple more. Well, that was a fun little project. I learned a few things doing that. I hope you did too. The rest of the video is going to be somewhat promotional. I want to give you a heads up on that. The way I support these videos is with my online store at weldmonger.com. So I want to show some of the more popular products for the rest of the video. And I wouldn't do that without including some good arc shots and some good educational stuff along the way. Let's do it. The first product I want to talk about is my TIG Finger and TIG Finger XL products. And a great example of where they come in handy is a preheated part like this. This is 4140 steel, really thick. I had to get it up to 500 degree preheat to follow the procedure and to keep it from cracking or get brittle zones. Notice I'm also traveling fairly slowly here. This is up around 160 to 170 amps. And I'm going slow so that I have good, good heat input with slow cooling rate. Purpose of preheat is to slow the cooling rate so that you don't create hardened or brittle zones. So this took two passes and I was propping with my TIG finger having to keep it 500 degrees the whole time. TIG finger regular slips over one finger. A TIG finger XL usually will slip over like a pinky in the finger next to it. It's thicker and bigger. Same material 
just uh, it's for those real hot preheat jobs. A good tip for you, I've showed this several times before, it bears repeating. You just get some braided bare wire from an old ground clamp or something. It makes a great ground for odd shaped parts that are hard to get a ground clamp clamped to. Here I am freehanding, propping again with a TIG finger because this thing is getting hot after the second pass. This is just a journal that I'm having to weld a radius in there so it can be remachined. One of the best reasons for a TIG finger is if you have to take a 6G welding test on something like this. I'm doing a little keyhole dip method here. This is 2 inch Schedule 80 6G pipe. And the last thing you want to worry about when you're stressed out over whether or not you're going to pass the test is your knuckles burning because you hung in there too long because you really need the job. So propping with a TIG finger kind of eliminates that and works really good. Here I'm going to come over that root pass with what's called a hot pass. It's not always hotter, but in some cases it's 10, 20, 25 amps hotter than the root pass. And the real objective on a hot pass on pipe like this is, you know, not to uh, disturb the root that you just put in there, not to go too hot or too slow so that you get sucked back. So being able to move out quickly and not have your knuckles burning is a big benefit to there. I took on a job of about 50 parts a couple years ago, and this one flange end I just walked the cup on using a gas lens and a 20 style water cooled torch. I was up around 200 amps, just motoring on. Worked out really well, but on the other end, I didn't have that scenario and I had a chamfer. So I just propped with the TIG finger lightly and used pulse current to, uh, to put that weld in there. And, and I was using a TIG finger XL here and you can see how hot that got. And my fingers didn't get hot though. A lot of welding went into those particular parts, you know, hinges and clevises and things like that. So they got really hot. I made good use of the TIG finger that day and I uh, was able to prop just like this and not have my fingers get hot. Okay, up next we're going to talk about the Stubby Gas Lens Kit. 17, 18, and 26 style torches come with a sort of a long cup and collet body. It looks like this. I'm going to give an example here of extending the electrode 7 16 of an inch. That's kind of the, an area where you start having trouble with a standard cup like this. Now I'm using a gas lens, a stubby gas lens kit, same stick out, same size, same flow rate, everything else, and you can see how much better things are going. So gas coverage on stainless is a huge deal. You know, when, you, when you've got oxides, that means you've got a gray puddle, a, a, a sluggish puddle, doesn't want to flow good. Gas lens can really make a difference on stainless. I also like to use a number six gas lens for aluminum a lot. Sometimes I don't use a gas lens on aluminum and I don't use a gas lens if I'm welding on something crappy like galvanized or something like that where it's going to sputter and spark and uh, kind of screw up my gas lens. But I use them a lot and like I said on, a, on aluminum I think a number 6 works really good with about 15, a little bit less than 15 CFH. I also got some things bundled for some savings. Uh, let's talk about the Fure 12, clear one and the ceramic. I just recently added the ceramic to the store. Here I've only, only got it stuck out maybe 5 eighths of an inch, but you can, you can as you saw earlier in, in this video, you can really use a long stick out. But really, really, really provides good coverage. That's like a silver weld there, hardly any discoloration at all. And the clear version of that, called the FUPA 12, I don't know why, but it works great too, and it actually does sort of light up the way a little bit because of that thing being clear, it sheds a little light and makes it easier to see where you're going, provides great gas coverage. I like to use pulse when I'm welding on an edge or near an edge. It, ten, it tends to make the, the, the bead just kind of stick in place and not wander and wick out. I like to use the rule of 33. That's sort of a phrase that I coined years ago. Here I'm using 50 pulses a second, but 33 on the other settings. If you can't remember the settings, just start out at 33 all the way around and then increase the pulse a little bit. You'll get something you like. This is the Furic number no. 8 cup. I was kind of giving it a sure enough torture test here on this. This is that same joint I was walking the cup on earlier. I decided to try it with my positioner and, and uh, torch holder and everything, and it did a great job. Here's a quick reminder on some of the things that go wrong when you're first learning to TIG weld. Too long of an arc, too much torch angle, and not shielding the hot tip of that rod can cause that, that, that bead to just be ropey because the, the metal just balls up in there. Here, I'm, I haven't changed a thing. Same amperage. I just tightened up the arc, and I'm using a not much torch angle, and I'm shielding the tip of that rod, and it's just slipping in there nice and making a lot better bead. This is that number eight again. This is a lap joint video I did a while back. You can see how that eight cup kind of acts as a light bulb and just kind of sheds some light on where you're going. 
you know, I'm, I'm 60 now at the point I'm making this video and my eyes aren't what they used to be and it really helps me see where I'm going when I'm, you know, it's hard to see the crack or the line or the joint. Here's another job I did with it years ago. Also, the number eight is rated for AC or DC. None of the other big ones with their wire screen diffusers are for AC, but this one is. So you can get it at weldmonger.com. And here's a shot of using a, a machine that has something called advanced pulse, where the machine alternates between electrode negative and AC. And man, when I cut and etch this, this thing, I got some really good penetration. But the cup, that was, that was up maxed out at 200 amps. Cup did a great job. Square tubing. Sometimes... I like to just lay the rod in there, especially on thin wall like this is just this is just one inch square tubing, about one sixteenth wall, and uh, lay the rod in there and just walk right over it. Again, with the eight cup, works great. Lots of ways to do it. You can dip the rod in and out, but it works great just to lay it in there. I've also got the eight bundled with a TIG finger for a little bit of a savings. There are quite a few bundles on my store. This is something called a mag tab by Stronghand Tools, and I found it to be a super handy little tool. It's primarily designed for tack welding tabs on like this, instead of having to hold them with your fingers to get that first tack on there. But you can tack all kinds of different shaped objects on stuff. It's just magnetic. It's not really designed to, to weld out with the thing on there, but just a quick quick example here of the weird shapes you can, you can hold in place and get a quick tack weld on. Even this big heavy ball bearing now, a ball bearing is probably not a great idea to weld on with so much carbon in there, but just for a demonstration, I thought it would be fun. One thing I've found these things really handy for is, is tack welding end caps on square tubing, especially if you've got a mitered end like this. It's just really like hard to get a clamp on there to hold it in place, or you just hold it with your fingers and then try to blast a quick fusion tack. But this makes it really easy to get that first tack on there for just coming along and welding the thing out and then blending it out, making it look nice. Well, that's a pretty good sampling of some of the more popular products. I am in the process of adding more and more products to the store. Things like flow meters, cutting torches, and things like that are coming soon. If any of this stuff you've seen here today in this video would help you up your game, head over to weldmonger.com, add it to the cart. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Thanks so much for your support. See you next time.